In this movie, we're going to focus on using rewire as a virtual instrument. So Pro Tools LE 7.4 is going to be driving Reason 4, and we're going to be writing all the notes in Pro Tools and receiving the notes in Reason, then feeding the audio back into Pro Tools. I've got a drum track set up here in Pro Tools, a very simple loop. Uh, not necessarily the best loop, but these are educational videos, I suppose. I'll loop this a little bit so we can have much more music to work with. Um, let's actually start it on bar two. Sometimes you need to give a little bit of space uh, for the rewire application to wake up. That hasn't been the case when I've been working on this machine, but I find that starting in a bar does help. Um, okay, and to create rewire, um, before I started the movie, I already created an instance, so Pro, uh, Reason is actually running in the background. Um, so it won't actually start up the program when I create the rewire instrument, um, but still we're going to be able to use it. Now I'll let you in on a little secret. We've been using instrument tracks this whole time for using virtual instruments, but truth is you can actually use aux tracks or audio tracks. I'm going to use aux tracks. Um, I just have... Uh, I'm a bit skeptical about instrument tracks for this purpose. And I'll use stereo aux input. I'm going to create three of these. The idea is that I'll be using three different instruments in Reason, and I'll be feeding them to three different sets of outputs. So I'll call the first one lead. Oh, not lead QD. <laughs> okay. And the next one chords. And the next one rhythm. For the lead, I'll load up multi-channel plugin, reason. And for the chords, I'll do the same thing. And also for rhythm. Now, you want to be very careful as to which one you're setting because all three of these look the same, but if you look here, where it says chords and I click on them. These are different um, instantiations of the rewire. Okay, so in Reason, I've got three devices set up, uh, Dr. Rex, Maelstrom, and a Subtractor. I've purposely not connected them, so that way we can go through the process of connecting them to the hardware interface. So the Dr. Rex, I'm gonna set up on input five and six. The Maelstrom I will set up on input 3 and 4. Oh, I'm sorry, here we go, output. And for the Subtractor, I'll set it up on Audio 1 on the hardware device. Now, the Subtractor is a mono device, so I could go back and actually set up a mono aux track. Um, I won't do that now. If it becomes a problem, then we just deal with it later. Okay, now I need to drive notes to the Reason hardware. Uh, so to do that, I'll create three new MIDI tracks. Now, keep in mind, we can actually use Reason's compositional interface, but we're not going to. The purpose of this movie is to use Pro Tools compositional interface. So lead notes, chord notes, and rhythm notes. So now we need to connect each of these tracks to Reason. So on the Lead Notes track, we'll choose the output. And our lead is going to be connected to the Subtractor. Our chords are going to be connected to the Maelstrom. And our rhythm is going to be connected to the Dr. Rex. All right. Now, one thing we didn't do, and this is probably when you do this on your own, this is where you're going to um, mess up or forget to do something. We need to go back to the Reason um, plugin, and we need, we need to set the input from the Reason hardware interface. So the lead is the subtractor, so let's take a look at that. And the subtractor is being sent to Audio 1. Okay. So Audio 1 is the default mix L, mix R. 
Um, I can see that, you know what, it might actually be a problem to have a stereo aux, so I'm going to create one mono aux, and I'm going to copy over. Oh, doesn't like it, so let's just create a new one. And I'm going to delete this lead track. Okay, now let's set the input to mix L. That's going to be audio one. We'll do the same for the chords track. That's the Maelstrom. So we go back over to Reason. The Maelstrom is being sent out to three and four. And then Dr. Rex is being sent out to five and six. So we want to receive on five and six. Okay, and nothing within Pro Tools on these aux tracks is telling you that the audio is from the Dr. Rex. You'll have to take notes when you do this on your own and it can get pretty complicated. So you want to be uh, very efficient at managing uh, your tracks in both programs. Okay, so we have our note routing correct, and we have our host tracks correct. So now we need to actually put in notes. So on the lead notes, as I click the keyboards, I should hear the sounds of the different dev devices. Now, it bears mentioning, and you really can't be redundant enough, that you're dealing with two programs, so you need to load up the sounds in your... Uh, rewire application so that way you're going to have sounds just because you connect the two programs together it doesn't mean that sounds will be ready to go and I did this before that I started capturing the movie we're not looking for greatness in this particular video we're just looking for um, educational practice and maybe in another video we can get down uh, with you know techniques to get great sound but right now we're just looking to compose something simple so starting at part two take the lead track and write something. Okay. Okay, and take a listen. Sounds fine to me. Do the same for the chords track. And I could actually play with the keyboard. Um, went over that in earlier movie with MIDI, select the track hit record and start using my MIDI keyboard, but I'm gonna avoid that for now. Okay. All right, and then I'll move these notes down. Okay. Right, and then finally our rhythm track. For this, I'm going to change the resolution. Uh, well, it's a 16th note. I'm going to do the Jackson Pollock technique, which I don't necessarily recommend. You can get some great sounds. And that's to just quickly spray a bunch of notes onto the grid. And that's done because of time, not, not because I can't compose a drum track. And then we have this. Let's mute the drums. Now, if the levels are too soft, there's a few things you can do. You can create a gain stage um, after the aux track, so maybe feed it into a bus. The best thing to do is actually handle the gain at its source. Um, in gain staging, you typically want to adjust from the source then forward. Here, that source would be reason, and on the device itself, there's volume. So there's volume for the Maelstrom, and for the Dr. Rex, there is volume, a volume slider here, level, and for the subtractor, there's also a volume knob. Oh, and here we go, level here in the upper right corner. You can also insert um, a mixer, and typically when you work with reason, these devices head into one of the mixers, like a 14 by 2, or it'll head into a combinator. Um, but since we're using it as a plug-in, we can go directly into the hardware interface. The downside is we're missing that gain stage that the mixer does supply us. 
so it might be a little quiet. For here, I'm just going to adjust the output on the device itself. I'm going to do something that's pretty brash, but we'll get the job done. I'll just turn the level up on all the devices. Oh, there's a little bit of clipping too. Uh, so that's probably a lesson. Don't be as brash. So we'll dial it down. And take a listen. All right. And when I want to record those notes onto a track, it's just as when I recorded my virtual instruments onto audio tracks. I'll create some new audio tracks. So I need one mono, that's for the um, subtractor, and two stereo. All right, and rename them. And instead of sending out separately, um, or you know, soloing and uh, doing multiple passes, I can actually record all three tracks at once by using three different buses. So for output one and two, I'll use bus one and two, bus three and four, and bus five and six within Pro Tools. I'd usually rename them. I'm not going to do that now. Uh, you can view earlier movies on renaming buses and set the inputs for these tracks to bus uh, one and two or here it's going to be bus three and four for the chords and bus five and six for lead audio um, or for the rhythm. Um, they're not giving me the option of um, input one for the bus and so I should go to setup IO click the bus tab and you want to be sure that you've got um, options for subpaths and there's no subpaths for this bus so I'll create really quickly two subpaths. I also went over this in a really early movie when talking about setting up your in-outs. Okay, now when I click on input one, I have bus one. Okay, um, now that I've got that, go back to the edit window. I've only got really one bar. Remember, when you're printing any kind of audio from an instrument, you do want to be a little careful as to the range that you collect, um, taking into account reverb tails and delay tails. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the record area a little bit before. So bar one to, I'll say, bar five. I'm being a little overcautious, but better overcautious than not. Now, let me make sure I've got all my ducks in a row. I'm taking in from the different inputs sent out from the buses, and nothing is soloed. Um, I do have the drums muted. Okay, let's now go for broke, record, and play. <laughs> And I certainly did overdo it with the record area, except you do see the chords track does have a lot of bleed after the third bar. Now that I've recorded all that audio, I'll disengage the record. I'll mute these notes so they won't be sent to reason. And solo, well, I don't need to solo. I've already got my drum track muted. And let's take a listen. There you go, all three tracks recorded. and. Again, it, it bears mentioning that a lot of these programs like Pro Tools do come with lighter versions of um, Reason and Ableton free, so you can really take advantage of the vast amount of sounds that are in these programs within your Pro Tools sessions. And a more, meaning, a more meaningful usage of this would be to bring in a session that we'd be working on and um, adding detail to our Pro Tools session with maybe some uh, reason instrument, maybe uh, enhancing the drums with additional percussion, like for instance that that happens here in this track when you combine the drum loop that we have pre-recorded with the rhythm track that we got from reason. So you get this kind of glitch 
um, ambient sound with this really dry uh, drum sound. And uh, really, possibilities become endless when you're dealing with using a rewire instrument as a plugin. <laughs> 